Cavefield Seventh-day Adventist Church is celebrating a hundred years. It is day 67. I'm doing very well um, after having, I, I guess, uh, an interesting day um, in terms of helping the folk deal with the tent at Rock Hall, trying to take it down to ensure that, you know, all is well um, as the storm pass, passes by. And then, of course, in the crusade, I think Pascal wants to start in the Richmond Hall area for the district. So it's been a day with some activity. I was trying to uh, recount the years. Um, it would have to be around three to four years. The the marker I used was the King is Coming Crusade. I was that was two thousand one, um, when uh, I think it was Fitzhenry who came to Barbados and did that crusade at the Hudson Turning Roundabout. That around that time, those three years, uh, three four years would have. Uh, would revolve before and after. Well, um, I like church. I like church, doing church buildings. One of the interesting things about Kefil, Kefil is a very old church. I was fortunate to be there at the time when they were doing the, the renovation of the church. Um, from what it was to what it looks looks like now. And uh, it was really a, a, an excellent work that was done, um, those who see it um, now, um, and those who have known what it was like before. It was a fantastic work. And to me, the, the, the church is to be about the most attractive place in the community. To community people, and also it should be attractive in terms of its own membership, you know, in, internally, externally, whatever. But that was one thing that I really, um, um, one memory I can treasure about KFL. And of course, the um, the rededication of it, which came sometime after, I don't remember the exact year, but um, the rededication of the building um, in terms of, you know, the renovation, restoration, whatever terms you want to use. Remember, um, some of the, 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 the social events that we had, um, of course, that was with the district, um, which would have at the time included Chance Hall, Checker Hall, and Grape Hall, those four churches. And we did do some events, and there was one particular picnic that I can remember. I was trying to recall where, where we went, but so far it's still kind of vague in my mind. But the social events that were, that were done there, and then, of course, KFL uniquely had um, a band of musicians. And um, I was privileged to, to, have, been, to have attended um, at least the concerts and stuff that they would have done in those times. Um, back then, I suppose, Lomer, who may now be one of the elders, Lomer and some others were active members in that in that um, that that band, that brass band, and yeah, I, I remember that band. As a matter of fact, KFU was pretty much known for that. Uh, I think they may have gotten lost somewhere along the way. I'm not certain what's happening now. I haven't been there for a long time, but um, <clears throat> um, but that was a really a, a, a major to me a major feature in the life of the church because. It was something that the youth of the church could hold on to. It was, you know, people who, particularly young people, I should say, need something in the church that they own. And the music, the playing of that, in that playing of that band, um, was something that the young people owned. So it was, it was really, it was really an honor to see them. Of course, there, I think there were harvests. So I can remember attending harvest. Um, which were always, um, you know, up to mark. So there's some, there's some good memories. These social occasions. Um, that's way back now, though. That's down the road now. But I can remember some of those things. Well, 
Well, you know, 100 years is 100 years. Not everybody has gotten there. Right? There are very few churches in Barbados that have reached a 100 milestone. And that is, I think it's a great, you know, there's a lot of nostal nostalgia with it, even though I was there for all, 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 all the years of the church. Um, I remember the early years as a, as a young, young man, visiting churches all over the place, and KFL was one of them. Um, but it's a great feeling, you know, to see a church has achieved, has been able to reach the 100th mark. Um, of course, that throws into the air a lot of things. Um, you, you look back and, and see um, where the church has come from, the journey it has traveled, what has been achieved in the name of the Lord, and then it, it, it creates a platform as to what is what should happen or what can happen um, going on from there. But it's a, it's really a, to reflect on it. It's really a great, um, it's a great feeling, you know, um, to see the church. Because there are very few that have reached that. As a matter of fact, I think in Barbados it may have been, may have been two outside of K. Phil. It's a phenomenal mark. It's a phenomenal achievement. It has always been until Jesus comes. And um, one doesn't hear that too much these days, but it, you know, it, it does not remove the fact that um, until Jesus comes is the, is the mark that we're looking at. Um, when I was there, your elder, I think, um, my good friend, um, Gary, he was a young man then. Some of those other young men there, I remember them. Uh, I mentioned over, yes, these are young guys. And um, now they um, ascended the seat to being seniors in the church and leaders in the church. It's the youth now who got to take courage, who now have to take up the baton and take it further. And you know, that's what I want to challenge the youth about. Being, being in church is not just about uh, membership and going there and doing things it's 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 some it's way wider and, and, and it transcends all of that the youth have the opportunity i remember um um as a young person learning a quote um from ella white actually and uh where she gives particular counsel in terms of young people she says um what with such an army of workers as of a youth um, rightly trained might furnish how soon the message of a crucified risen and soon coming savior might be carried to all the world. I, I live with that because I grew up with it as a young person. Now I want to leave this with the young people, right? Jesus is coming again. They are the ones, you the youth are the ones who are now on stage um, to be the ones as um, Ben Hoyt was saying, right? To provide for, facilitate, make, make the pathway clear for people because Jesus is coming. However, um, you need to be trained to do this. I know uh, we live in a time when most of our young people, if not all, um, are degree, level educated, some have gone on to masters, whatever, whatever, in the different areas. And um, God has a place for you. I don't care what is your area of discipline. It matters not. I know you may say that you don't see room for it in your church, but there is room for it in your church. And I want to challenge you young people. These are the skills and the talents God has given you to use to ready a a world for his second coming. And when you look around and see the chaos that's going on in politics, the chaos that's going on in nature, we are at the evening, we are, there's uh, a storm is due to come, hurricane rather due to come here. Um, we are a world where, you know, things, um, confusion is almost the order of the day. People are not sure. 
in terms of um, gender issues. You know, people are not sure whether they're male or female, or if they're neither male nor female. This is a time that, that, that you know, confusion is rife. And um, for some people, they see it's frightening, but it opens up the it opens up some 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 um, some opportunities that have never existed. And you, the youth, um, with all of the education that you've got, you now need the faith of Jesus to um, be whom Jesus wants you to be as you relate to these, all of this stuff going on around you, whether it's political, whether it is economical or it's social, um, it's religious, um, you're the ones. But you have got to be equipped to do it. And God's Spirit, of course, will equip you. Of course, there are lots of other resources available to that you can be equipped as to provide the leadership that the church needs at this time. This is a challenging time. Frankly, I have never seen it. Like what you are seeing now. I've never seen it, at least in my lifetime. But it's here now. And you are the ones to step on stage and make the difference. I pray, God, that um, just as I might say, you know, um, <clears throat> with such an army of workers as of might, rightly trained, you got to get yourself rightly trained. Otherwise, you will not be able to provide the leadership that not just the church, but the world needs. The world needs needs young men and young women who understand God, who understand the, the things of God. Because um, it seems to be not just confusion, but um, a profound state of ignorance concerning God. And in many cases, um, a complete denial of, of the existence of God. It's a challenging time, but I know that the young people who are the ones on stage, no, you're the actors on the stage. Um, let not the um, let not the saying of Shakespeare um, be be the story that's told concerning itself. Shakespeare said, I will end with this. He said, life is but a poor player who struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. He says, it's a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Will that be the commentary of your time on stage? I sincerely hope that it will not be. But rather, the commentary, the commentary, would be, and I quote another poet that you may or may not have heard. Um, uh, I learned this as a teenager going to school, right? Um, <clears throat> it speaks about life again, but this is a different story. It says some, this is a verse that says, what lives of great men all remind us that we can make our lives sublime and departing leave behind his footprints on the sands of time. Yeah, I just want to take that part of the poem. I won't take any more of it. It says that you, there are others who've gone before you who've made a tremendous difference. You are the ones on stage now, and you're the ones who've got to make your life sublime in connection, in subjection to Jesus. That's how your life becomes sublime and make the difference in the world that Jesus wants you to make. God bless you. And as you, as you, the youth, go forward, supported by the adults in the church, because that was, that's what the adults will serve, serve as, to support and to help to provide guidance and whatever else. God bless you as a church in this 100th anniversary, as you all look forward to move forward in the name of Jesus towards the time when Christ will return, which, as the Bible declares, is sooner now than it was yesterday. God bless you all. Thank you.